I'm going to harvest food from the streets of Philadelphia. This is a mulberry tree. Of the 12 artists in the Academy's Legacy Show, there was one who taught me how to paint. I, I and I'm going to pull a branch down. We're going to actually wait, eat wait, wait, off wait. of it. We lived together as art students, drinking $4 cases of Bartel's pure beer, eating canned wax beans, and fighting off cockroaches. Dad, this is how we eat in New York. Watch and learn. Watch and learn. Edgar was wild, brilliant, egotistical, and very, very funny. Also one of the most empathetic friends I have ever had. And he hasn't changed too much over the years. Ruslan! Wait, 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 there's the Russian guy. No, no, it's more important. <laughs> I have two very good drawings right here. Who, what's your name, sir? Edgar Jarrett. Edgar grew up in Nebraska. For better or worse, all his sense of himself, of masculinity, came from out there. No matter how long he lives in New York City, he will always be a man of the West. Wait, are you in this art show? Right there! What? That bug? No? Oh, oh, Edgar, these are... That man has a loaded gun! <gasps> Edgar's mission with these drawings is to portray human beings on the edge of loss and despair. But the act of portrayal imbues his subjects with so much dignity that a kind of stoic heroism results. And there's Sterling and Ruby and Daddy. And look, hold your babies, hold your baby's eye. The idea of family in all its complexity is central to Edgar's art. And you guys, every kid got a, a doll? No, we you, got it from the machine. You just stole it? No, Sterling stole hers. You stole it, Sterling? With clinical detail, he examines the way brothers and sisters carve out their bits of space from the larger whole. Oh, you know, worship, like bow and don't worship. No, no, no. John, no. no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Parents on the way down, debts that must be repaid, love with the sense of being trapped. This is Edgar's lovely, lovely wife, oh. the glamorous movie star. Well, okay, actually, TV this. star. Okay, what do you think? Give me the lowdown. Isn't this I just great? I cannot handle this. Um, it's great. I love that Edgar is so happy and that my family is here. Alana and Edgar were like two stars drawn together by the gravity of their shared charisma. And once I got to know her, I realized that Alana was always going to keep my friend on track. She is wonderful. Hi, John. What did you think of the show? It was good. I wish. John. Actually, the show is wonderful. It's wonderful. And especially that guy, uh, Jarens. Ed Edgar's. Edgar's Jarens. <laughs> Years ago, me and my twin brother, Jim, decided that Edgar would be our brother also. Whenever we see the three stars of the constellation Orion, we think Jim, John, and Edgar. This drawing was done shortly before our father died in 2003. Edgar portrayed our loss with such poignance, it's hard for me not to cry. Ruby, are you 10 now or 11? 11. And Sterling is 5? Yeah. And you guys get along pretty good? Most of the time. I think Sterling is an angel, is she? Yeah. And you are too? Yes. What do you think about your dad being in this art show? Well, his um, drawings are the biggest. And so. the best? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ruby. Somehow Edgar understands identical twins. The love, the rivalry, the closeness, the claustrophobia. He gets all of it. 
Say that again, Edgar. What were you saying about the if sky? If you painted that sky that against those perfect. buildings, that wouldn't look real. I'd go, I'd go, the sky doesn't match the landscape. It looks fake. The sky actually looks fake. Now, have you seen a sky in recent years? Do you, where do you live, in New York we City? We don't see skies, and we forgot about sunsets. It's all over with for us. We just see clouds overhead and no stars and darkness. He came to the Academy in the fall of 1976 as a 17-year-old. Weeks before, his oldest brother had shot himself to death. Eight years later, his youngest brother would do the same. In a book or a play, this level of tragedy wouldn't be believed. Alana, you're not going back with your children? Is that the hotel? Yeah. No artist works harder than Edgar to achieve a penetrating psychological specificity. His method is an absolute dedication to understanding the details and patterns of visual reality. But it is how he weaves these details together compositionally that brings the inner lives of his subjects to such vivid existence. What's it like to be in the show, Edgar? This show is one of the best things that's ever happened in my life. And why? Bar none. Because I'm showing with Sidney Goodman at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. Went to school here, and Sidney Goodman's show is awesome, and I'm part of it. Sydney started teaching at the Academy when Edgar was in his second year. Their mutual respect has been the basis of a 30-year friendship. Edgar reveres Sydney above all other living artists. Go again. <laughs> okay, now go get in the elevator quick. The elevator's closing, Sterling. It's closing. You're going to be left to a mulberry harvest on your own. Okay. <laughs> Okay, wait, keep her away from me. Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let this part to you. She's a little angel. She is. Oh, I'm dizzy. The art world is often a fickle place, but work as important as Edgar's deserves to be seen. I applaud Sidney Goodman and the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts for their good sense in selecting him for this show. Through his drawings, Edgar Jarens provides us all with some needed spiritual nourishment. Is this the only food you guys get? We have to harvest our own food. Uh, Daddy's has a tough time in his career. 